On February 10th, 2004, Kanye West released his debut album, The College Dropout. Now that this album is 20 years old, we're gonna dive in and look at some sampling secrets within the album. Recreate a couple beats from this album to see Kanye's unique sampling style and talk with Ken Lewis, who's responsible for recreating multiple samples on the album. That's you. That is my voice, baby. <laughs> Including ones that you will never believe. You're blowing my mind right now. This is crazy. <laughs> Seriously, there are several samples that aren't samples at all. It's all Ken. Let's dive straight in, starting with the first song on the album, We Don't Care. The sample here is from the 1979 Jimmy Castor Bunch song, I Just Wanna Stop. This is pitched up and sped up. So on my project here, the yellow track here, this is We Don't Care. The orange track is the original sample, Jimmy Castor. Here's what that sounds like. Let's pitch that up for the red track here. Now the grayed out sections is what he's not using. So we have that intro, and then again on this red track here, this is sped up. So then a little later into the song, here's the sample chops. You can already hear the song kind of coming together from that. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I'm not able to play the whole sample here, but the Patreon edit is longer with more music and a lot more stuff that doesn't make the YouTube edit. Anyway, this is chopped up and made into the main sample bed like this. But of course, this is just the beginning. Let's start with the drums. We've got a kick, a clap, and some shaker in there. Let's program these in. But there are other layers of live instrumentation on top of this, including electric bass. There's also violin by Miri Ben Ari, who is all over this album, as well as additional voices by multiple vocalists, including John Legend. But layering this sample with live bass, violin, and vocals, the whole thing feels fresh and distinctly different from a lot of pure sample-based hip hop that came before it. Of course, this is not the first time live instrumentation and samples have been used together, but the sound of this, the feel of the drums, the pitched up chipmunk sounding sample. It sounds very early Kanye. That chipmunk vocal though, sometimes like on this song, it's a pitched up sample and sometimes, as we'll see in just a minute, it's not. It's actually, well, you'll have to see. It's crazy. For now, let's put the sample with the drums. By the way, if you're in the producers tier on Patreon, you can download the exact beat recreations I make for these videos. If you've watched this channel for a while, you're probably already familiar with Ken Lewis. He's a Grammy winning producer, musician, and engineer. I've had him on the podcast and a couple videos before. He recreated the nylon string guitar sample for All Falls Down off this album, but he did a lot more for the college dropout. And he first started working with Kanye long before the college dropout. Nobody was checking for Kanye as an artist at the time. Yeah. Everybody thought it was producer making an album. Yeah. You know, gratuitous, just wants to be a rapper for a project, and that's all. And the first time I was ever in the studio with Kanye, he was producing a Memphis Bleak song. <clears throat> I'm putting music down uh, at the console that's me and the engineers across from me, and Kanye is on the back couch with a couple of his uh, friends, not paying attention to the session in the least and he's just spitting non-stop for hours and this is long before he was signed yeah so it was like 2002 i was sitting there at the at the console listening to this guy spit a not having any idea that he had any aspirations to be an artist whatsoever and b hearing such amazing lyricism and flow coming out of him yeah. that was so utterly different than everybody else at the time nobody thought he was going to do anything and i was like this dude is going to be the next yeah and i mean i can't believe almost everybody didn't sign him i know i know it's it it's was wild so dumb obvious to me i just couldn't even believe it 
Yeah. And But thank you, Dame Dash, for pulling the trigger. One of the songs Ken worked on for this album was Family Business. This is one of my favorite songs from this album. The beat is so good, there's this emotional piano in there. But let's talk about these samples. We start with piano that's slightly out of tune but feels right. Then we get to this vocal sample in here that says, All, all the glitter is not gold. Wow, yeah, we're gonna uh, put this on not reality. Oh. Well, here's the original sample from Funky Thing Diamond Ring by the Dells from 1972. All it glitters. Speed that Isn't up. that go? All it glitters. Isn't that go? All it glitters. Isn't that go? Except on Kanye's song, that's not a sample. That's Ken Lewis. The the ones that always stun hip hop people when <laughs> when they talk to me and have no idea of my background is uh, the old Southern black man on Family Business. All the glitters is not gold. Uh -huh. All gold is not reality. That's me. That's you. That is my <laughs> voice, baby. <laughs> so, I mean, manipulated very heavily, but that's me. That's <laughs> and crazy. Dude, the funniest story on that whole project, my old production partner and dear friend uh, Brent Colatala was working with me on that one. And I had been up like all night. Yeah. And uh, and we had been up for days on end. I mean, we were both exhausted, but I sent him home to rest. And he comes back in the next morning and I'm, I'm in front of my kind of controls and my speakers and I have a microphone in front of me. And, and I'm just looking ragged ass, like I probably haven't showered in a fucking week, you know, just nose to the grindstone working. And, and I'm going, all the glitters, all the glitters, all the, and Brent walks in, he's like, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, oh, you think this shit is easy? Okay, you get to do the next part. So I made Brent do the thang, the thang, thang, the yeah. thang, thang. So when you go back and listen to it, that's Brent. After I finished the, all the glitters part, I, I was like, here, you just knock out the thang part. I'm going to be downstairs making some breakfast. And me and my wife are downstairs listening to him 400 takes of thang, the thang, <laughs> thang, thang. Uh, and the other thing that I distinctly barely remember about family business was by the time we were done with the vocal portions of the samples that we were recreating for it we had to redo the piano that's my baby grand piano left purposefully out of tune uh to do that piano part and i was so exhausted by the time that we needed to do that part that i couldn't think straight and couldn't play so i called my friend uh josh and he came in and he played the part on my piano got it that might have been the very last thing that i did for the record and yeah. i don't know that i have ever been so decimated with burnout in my life except for when we finished our duties on college dropout yeah oh. Whew. It, it was a lot yeah but totally worth it as we're here talking about it 20 years, 20 later. years later yeah if kanye makes a thing and then they don't clear it and then they bring in you to recreate that what's that process like for you uh it's a ton of listening uh you know it's kind of like peeling back an onion the more that you listen and the more different ways that you listen all of a sudden different things within that sample reveal themselves and you know i'm not being tasked to just if there's a piano and a guitar and drums just to record new piano and drums and guitar and replay the parts you know if the g string on the guitar was 10 cents flat mine is too you know yeah. if that piano was a big dark warm piano then mine is going to be too if it had a big hall reverb on it mine is going to match it it's going to be a mirror in every way that i can uh give back to them yeah. so that when kanye drops that recreation back into the beat it's the exact same feel for him that he fell yeah. in love with in the first place. Is it a mix of both or do you lean on one or the other if it's the original sample versus what he had done with it? Like in trying to match the sound? It, it really depends on what he's done and how far away from the original he's taken it. If he's taken it so far away via like stretching or pitch shifting or something like that, that the sonics 
aren't going to line up to what the source is anyway, then I may just go from only the sample itself. Another great example of Kanye layering instrumentation with samples is on the song Spaceship. The sample here is from Distant Lover by Marvin Gaye from 1973. Here's the section he's sampling. There's two main sections. This orange highlighted section right here is one. In addition to that, he's also grabbing the first few bass notes from the very top of the song. Kanye's taken this, pitched it, sped it up, and chopped it a bit. Check this out. He's also got those opening bass notes from the intro pitched up. The drums are layered in with this, and what's interesting to me is that the Marvin Gaye song is in 6-8, and Kanye has kept his song in 6-8 instead of straightening out to 4-4. That's the far more common time signature, especially in hip-hop, but Kanye is keeping it in 6-8. Not only that, the beginning of the phrase has much less drums, and the end of the phrase is much busier. This purple track right here, this is the drums. Check this out. Real basic at the beginning. Now all you need is additional vocals from Tony Williams and John Legend, and you've got Spaceship. That chipmunk soul sound is a style associated with early Kanye. He didn't invent it, but he utilized it a lot, taking a soul song and pitching it up so it sounds like a chipmunk. This is Marvin Gaye pitched up. He did the same technique on Through the Wire with the Shaka Khan song, and on Never Let Me Down, it's not a soul song, it's actually a rock song. Check this out. Here's Maybe It's the Power of Love by Blackjack from 1980. And as we start to speed it up, we can hear the Kanye song in there. Right? Except this isn't a sample. It's all Ken Lewis. On Never Let Me Down. When it comes to being true, at least true to me. That's you as well? One thing I found. One thing I found. No, no, you'll never let me down. 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 You still Along got with it. the sped up guitars and sped up bass and sped up drums. I did all that. Wow. Me and Brenton, yeah. Yeah, You're there's... blowing my mind right now. This is crazy. <laughs> you know, sample recreations are like that. It's every single one is a new, unique, independent challenge. And, you know, you, you get skill sets that you build up from, from doing others. But each one is still just like a Sherlock Holmes figure it out, you know, puzzle yeah. to solve. Ken recreated this sample, which again, blows my mind that that's him. And then Kanye layered in vocals and other instrumentation like keys, guitar, bass, and percussion on top, similar to what we saw on a few other songs. The end result is iconic. I'm gonna be honest though, knowing that some of these samples aren't samples at all and are instead recreations by Ken Lewis, that's crazy. I think that's a contributing factor to the sound of this album as well. It's not just the layers of instrumentation mixed in with the samples. It's not just the pitched up chipmunk soul sound. It's the fact that songs like Never Let Me Down aren't samples, but are recreations. It's another tool in the tool belt of sonic choices you can use. Another favorite song of mine on this album is Last Call. This is the last song on the album and features a mix of live instrumentation, all mixed with this Bette Midler sample. As well as this sample. Mr. Rockefeller. Right? Man, this is amazing. Last song on the album, which was on Rockefeller Records, the sample references Mr. Rockefeller, plus it's Bette Midler. Except, come on, did I really get you? It's not Bette Midler. That's Ken Lewis. Here's to the rock, here's to Rockefeller. Yeah. That's me. Wow. Um, on Last Call. So everything musically on Last Call that you hear, except for the kick, snare, and shaker, uh, is me. Wow. Um, I did all the music. I did the chipmunk voice. I sung that. Um, and I created all the music. 
And, That's uh, amazing. And with yeah. 2004 technology, as we as we yeah. said, <laughs> <laughs> man, we were we were doing some serious innovating back then, man. The, that we were uh, able to accomplish with the tools of the day were, I mean, and you know, back then the tools of the day were like we couldn't believe how good the tools of the day right, were. Right. Right. But now it's like different animals. Yeah. Now, another song that Ken Lewis worked on was All Falls Down. The original sample is Mystery of Iniquity by Lauryn Hill, but Kanye had to recreate the sample at the last minute. So he called Selena Johnson for the vocal and Ken Lewis for the nylon string guitar. This song is so good and Ken's story is so crazy. I already made a whole other video about that. And to watch it, you gotta click here. <laughs> 